currently uh, working for Disney as the senior director of Ad Sales and Partnership. So just a little bit on my career. So I spent the last 16 years in media industry and it's kind of interesting how I get started in media. So I was actually right after I graduated, um, I joined a high-end furniture company as a marketing exec. So just been there for a couple of months. I'm supposed to plan for a campaign. So we decided to go for a radio campaign. So that's where I call out MediaCorp, right? To get one of the salesperson to come, the account servicing person to kind of talk to me and share more on how we can roll our campaign together. So that's where I actually found, she later became my colleague, my peers. So I actually found her, her, her job is pretty interesting. I was like, okay, that is actually what I wanted to do most. Like interestingly able to creatively plan something for clients. And really, I mean, I realized radio, it's, I mean, we've been re- listening to radio st- during school days. It's like very different where you get into the environment and you know how creative you can get with that time. So I actually started Googling on MediaCorp and then I saw there was an opening and I really went straight into, you know, applying for the job. And I mean, we went through the interviews. I spent the first two years um, selling radio at times and then uh, MediaCorp also went through several um, restructuring. So uh, I spent a total of six years there. So subsequently after the two years, um, we went into full integration. So I was put into a department um, called the integrated team. So I, I find those restructuring really good, though it was disrupting for a, a new um, you know, career starters then for me. But I realized that because we are so young, we have, we have nothing that much to worry about. So given the different opportunities to learn different platforms. So from radio, we started, I mean, that's where I started. And then during the integrated phase, you know, they put me through um, TV at time, um, publication, magazines. So that's where I also learned about monthly, weekly, stateline, uh, newspaper today, you know, um, all the, yeah, all the radio channels from all the different languages, outdoor. After six years at MediaCorp, I was thinking, okay, you know, I probably learned all the media platform in this place. I was like, okay, I think I need to, I have a wish to really move on to learn other media. So, so timely that um, I got a call from Mahit Hansa to uh, join Fox. So that was also the moment where uh, I think it's, a, it's probably a year after um, Fox uh, combined with NetJo and Star Business. So they are basically the one of the um, cable ch- uh, company with the largest um, uh, suite of channels. So uh, I, be- I joined them as the first uh, local person based in Singapore for the uh, senior manager role, where we started really uh, reaching out to uh, local businesses. So, I mean, I stayed there for four years, working very closely. Again, I find the transition very exciting because even though we all think it's a broadcast business, how different can it be? But cable, you learn a, a lot of different um, things like um, regulation into different markets because there is the same feed, right, on the channel, how it's feeding to different markets and also how uh, things need to be set up, how content is different, speaking to local, because I mean, MediaCorp is FCA, right? Free to air locally. So how you need to speak to many different audiences, um, dubbing, subtitling. So I think those are really another new phase of learning for me. So after four years, again, I start to think, okay, what actually I haven't learned in, in this whole media scene, what else? So it's probably left with outdoor, social, digital. So, and that's where I, I met the uh, CEO of Clear Channel, the bus shelter company. So uh, she got me over to, to lead the, the sales part of things and also um, commercial director. That was the role then. So after a year plus, I mean, there, it's exciting again, how you see um, we can, how we actually capture, you know, audiences with ads, even when they move around. So I think that's another different space, like how you capture media when they were consuming you know, on their phones, even on TVs, on broadcasts, on radio, but again, tracking them where they go in a way. It's also interesting to learn. Yeah, so it's another new learning for me. So after a year plus, um, that's where the my previous boss, SVP from Fox, called me back because she was setting up a new team again. So she wanted someone to, yeah, she wanted someone uh, based in Singapore who is knowledgeable about the Singapore business to um, basically cover Singapore and APEC business that actually um, sell across sports, entertainment, and the factual genre, which is leading to my current role now. So, I mean, again, a lot has changed. For the last four years, I've been back. So from Fox, I, I think the news was, uh, I mean, there's even major acquisition. So, I mean, we be- became a bigger 
um, powerhouse right now. So we we are under Disney. So with Disney, I think uh, there's a lot of exciting stuff going on. So um, I'm leading the partnership part of things and at sales for the media networks and focusing um, deeply into like sports channels and uh, the factual natural. So this basically summarizes the 16 years of movement restructuring. So I mean, I'm going to list maybe, uh, I'm just going to pull out a few. So the new trends in media, I think uh, with the current pandemic, uh, we see even a more accelerated, you know, in terms of the pace of the change for media consumption habits. So uh, social media popularity, I think, continues to grow. Especially now, I think we are back in lockdown <clears throat> in various different markets. So I think that has actually generally moved us to that social space, right? Like we interact with friends, we keep in touch. <clears throat> Sorry. So I think uh, one of this is like <clears throat> brands will continue to take a less is more um, posting approach so yeah for example like brands used to elaborate a lot in their advertising i think they are being very um, um, cautious now they are becoming more thoughtful about when they post anything especially during this uh, COVID 19. so that's that's what i see in the trend of uh, marketeers now as well um, i think another point is also uh, content value will um, actually beat now production quality um, i think for, for the time being, because I think a lot of things, uh, businesses were previously forced into um, very quick, you know, uh, um, complete uh, remote uh, mode during the past shutdowns. So uh, social media and videos um, teams are basically um, um, trying to develop um, scalable production processes that could be done at home. So I think there was also a new trend where people do live streaming and also a production working with celebrities, you know, like influencer, where they can record things uh, on their own. So, I mean, the quality, as we can tell, is basically uh, uh, very different from the quality we used to get. But I think people are accepting that, that kind of quality, given they are also being on Zoom every day, right? So I think that's one thing they became understanding for consumer as well. Um, some other trends like consumers will, um, it's really craving for short content now. I think um, it, that will continue to take the center stage. Patience-wise, you know, they, I mean, uh, especially the younger audience, they are so, they are so uh, um, quick, right, into wanting to consume what they want. You know, they keep on having the big So it's just keep on rolling, video coming in. So keeping to short content, I think, is the, the, the way that it will still go. And uh, <clears throat> social media platform could also double as um, shopping channels. So like, for example, Facebook shops, um, IG, they have those um, shoppable posts. So immediately consumers see something, they can actually buy the product seen uh, straight away. And then uh, without having to leave the app, they can actually finish the purchase. So this is how I, I think we also saw a few uh, brands, right? Uh, apps coming to becoming this super app. That's why we call super app, right? Yeah, they try to start off from the main core business, putting more and more stuff. You know, I think we saw a, a few players like Grab, one of them, they try to be payment mode and how, you know, slowly putting content. I think they are trying to capture the um, consumer to the space. I think that that's pretty, pretty smart. So you will see maybe more and more um, super app, you know, in the making. And I think lastly for trend, uh, authenticity will be vital. You know, like we are seeing a lot of uh, more purpose-driven brand campaign as well. I think as people are all... Um, pretty much globally connected. So uh, all the problems, uh, issues that happen, not just uh, in Singapore or even not even just South Asia, we are really largely connected around the world. So I think people are um, constantly standing up for injustice or thing that they think they need to put the voice and support to. So I think um, this, is, this is how purpose-driven brand campaign will also start um, you know, uh, increasing. Um, those key, uh, key skill sets that's very um, important for early career starter would be um, have, having passion for what you want to do. Because I always believe um, with passion, you will always give your best. And even when jobs or situation becomes demanding, you wouldn't feel that you are, you will give up that easily because there was this passion still burning. So I think one passion is really important. And uh, I mean, I think one also has to be street smart uh, in terms of uh, having good EQs. 
um, able to navigate around for solutions. Because I think um, even early years, because I mean, usually it will be a pretty junior stage of that career. So I think there's a lot of pressure from everywhere, right? I mean, there's KPI to deliver. There's also other departments you have to work with to make sure that things go smoothly. But of course, and also there will be some things that uh, didn't go the way that we planned. So I think having uh, good relationships, able to navigate around, uh, will help to to find a solution quicker and then uh, maybe making things more pleasant as quickly as possible. And uh, I think the last point that I think is critical would be to be very hardy and resilient because um, as you can see, changes happen. Like how I shared 16 years, there's a lot of restructuring happening. Uh, disruptive, but I think, it, I think that was very positive for my career building in terms of knowledge building as well. But you see with pandemics like that, you know, um, the stress from different areas, from external, from internal companies. So I think one has to be resilient to continue to be able to endure hardships and uh, yeah, adapt to changes. So I think, yeah, I mean, these are the key key skills or key pointers to me. Yeah. Key learnings from all this, well, I think it will be in life, it is really okay to make some mistakes. Um, here and there. So I think as long as we persevere and stay determined, um, I feel everything will fall in place uh, ultimately. So I think there's a lot of stress and um, that is putting on people of different age group and probably, you know, the, the career building, the mid-range, right, where it's like the 30s-ish to the late 40s, is undergoing a, a huge stress because stress from home, multitasking, also work and also the unexpected situations from, the, you know, um, economy. So I think it's okay. It's okay sometimes we didn't excel in every area, but I think ultimately we just hang in there, uh, persevere, stay focused, stay determined, things will fall in place. Um, I also think uh, we can't be 100% prepared for any new changes, right? We, we always, I mean, especially in Singapore, we are trained to always prepare. We always want to anticipate and prepare, right? But I think we cannot, we can never be 100% prepared. So as long as we take it um, again positively, again, the, the uh, you know, determined to not give up, uh, we will be able to adjust accordingly to the situation and slowly again, still back to be, you know, uh, back on track. Um, lastly, I think uh, from all the years that I've seen, uh, relationships are really, really important. I think it's important in a corporate world as well. Um, we have to be, uh, even though we are, I mean, I'm in the sales business, um, I think uh, I usually treat all my, I mean, my clients ultimately all became my friends. So it's like, I think we need to be real so and sincere towards people so uh, I mean we'll be surprised how uh, those relationships that we didn't know what to expect can actually help us in terms of many ways like um, uh, business deals as in you know we, we tend to get able to work better quicker still delivering the same output or even quicker because we understand each other better so I think that helps a lot in business deal um, also in internal colleagues so I mean when we have a problem a little uh, a crisis so I think if we both understand each other have some uh, relationship friendship there I think it's easier and people tend to um, put down some stuff that they're busy with to just help out so I think that help is important at that critical time that we, is needed and lastly um, I think even for people working uh, under you you know um, I think as a mentor, relationship is especially important. Um, understanding them, what they face at home. I think that's the job of a leader. Not just mentor at work. Not just uh, uh, sh uh, pushing the person to deliver the best, meeting the KPIs. But I think also um, understanding what's going on for them and able to uh, to adjust and, uh, and stand in accordingly. Especially for women now. I think um, some, some uh, moms may be faced, like, for, for example, this COVID-19, you know, like uh, home-based learning at home, um, you know, also probably sick kids can't go to school, the school will reject them. So I think we have to be, uh, um, to have a lot of empathy for situation like that. And then, um, yeah, then I think relationship continue to build and go stronger in a longer way.